Hi, welcome friends. We're excited to have you join us for the 2023 Knapp Institute Summer Conference. My name is John Meyer. I'm the Executive Director of the Knapp Institute. And we are tremendously blessed again this year. We are expecting over 900 Catholic leaders from around the world to join us this summer in July. And we, once again, are gonna have tremendous opportunities for faith, for fellowship, uh, for spiritual renewal at the conference at three beautiful hotels. So the Meritage Resort, um, our kind of flagship property, the Grand Reserve at Meritage, which will be complete buyouts, and then a new property this year so we could expand the size of the group, the Westin in Napa. Um, and that's gonna be a great opportunity for families. Uh, large rooms, family activities, right off of downtown Napa, and a shuttle that's gonna run constantly back and forth between that hotel and the conference. So uh, if you haven't gotten your rooms, uh, please uh, look at the West End. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to, uh, to come. I'm joined by two of my favorite people, two people who are very familiar to you, uh, Tim Bush, our founder, uh, and Father Spitzer, our president. Um, Tim, welcome. It's great to have you with it's us. It's great to be here, John. Yeah, and Father, uh, always good to have you as our, as our spiritual guide. Would you open us in prayer? Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, as we are in the midst of this time of a real crisis in culture and real divisions in our church, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit down upon us and upon all the planners of this conference and our speakers so that we might give uh, real solutions according to your will to some of these problems that are deeply set and vexing uh, to our culture and to our church. Ask you too that uh, we might be leaders that bring uh, solutions to our uh, places, not only of business and residence, but also to the churches that we represent. We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for, pray us. for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks. We're going to open up talking about today's theme, or, or this conference theme for this year. Um, Fran Mayer, who's really the architect of this, is, is a great part of our team. And as we were discussing this year, it's no secret that 2023 is a great time of, uh, of discord in our nation, but also in our church. And one of the great lies of today is that life is a battle between good people and evil people. Um, you know, good people are people who agree with you, are same political party, same race, same religion, and the bad people are everyone else. Um, and this creates serious division, uh, even hatred, um, a lack of civil discourse, no one's willing to engage anymore in the culture. Uh, it also has an impact on our faith. It creates a great deal of distress and sadness, a lack of joy in the faith. So in coming up with this year's theme, we decided what we go with is what we need now. Um, so what do we need now? What we need is to recover the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives and his promise uh, of peace. Um, so peace is a way that we should live our lives, and peace is absolutely what we need now. It's um, a renewal and reinforcement of hope in our faith. So I'd like to first start with Tim. Uh, Tim, why is this topic so important? What does it mean to you? Well, as you said, uh, it's really been a, a difficult time in our society over the last five or ten years where we've become tribal. And uh, one of the things Napa Institute is about is trying to bring people together and have conversation, create friendships. Uh, fraternity is one of the three pillars. But also through liturgy and faith formation to learn more about ourselves. And you're going to go through the three days, you know, the person, the church, and the culture. And we hopefully we'll do a better job of trying to just converse with our friends. We're not going to win a, this by yelling and screaming at each other. Uh, we really have got to uh, talk to people uh, because if we do have the truth, then the truth will prevail. And so uh, uh, Napa is also going to be starting a, a series of salon dinners uh, where we're going to start bringing together people outside of this conference that are leaders and on each side of the ideology so that we can start to make them friends and also bring them uh, together and, and closer uh, and, and especially in the commonality of our faith, uh, the Roman Catholic faith. Father, what about you? What, what are your thoughts on the topic? Well, um, adding to, to Tim's, of course, the tribalism problem is, uh, is uh, very acute right now. And um, identity politics, as we saw talked about last year, is very prevalent. I think also there's a malaise in the culture that's not just reflective of the, the discord that's out there, but the, the loss of faith that you referred to, John. I mean, the, the, you know, the loss of Jesus Christ, the loss of a moral compass through Jesus Christ has created a real malaise. And we've seen it you know, prior to uh, COVID um, where the suicide rates, depression, anxiety were shooting up in just a 10-year period. We're shooting up 60% among young people. And then with COVID, 
a doubling of that increased amount, and it continues post-COVID, not just because of the isolation, but because there's something fundamentally missing. And as you put your finger on it, of course, it's Jesus Christ. Of course, it's his teaching. Of course, it's his definition of love. Of course, it's his way, truth, and life. And, and so we need to, to find creative ways, as Tim uh, was saying, uh, creative ways of getting this into our culture, but also uh, to be bringers of peace, uh, to try and be uh, sowers of real harmony uh, with those who don't agree with us, but at the same time, be valiant in holding on to the truth. Yeah, thank you, Father. So we're going to start, as Tim said, the first day will be on the person. Um, and, and in fact, the first talk itself will be given by Curtis Martin from Focus. Uh, Curtis will frame the entire event. Uh, his talk title is What We Need Now, the theme of the conference. And to Father's point, we live in this culture with, with this alarming level of unbelief, lack of faith. Um, and people don't know what they need. You know, faith is what gives our life meaning and purpose. And there's so much sadness and and conflict and anxiety in the culture and you know Augustine's maybe overused quote but wonderful quote our hearts are restless they rest in thee most people don't realize that is exactly what they're seeking so um, Curtis will start the whole event by saying by essentially giving us a call to anchor our lives in our Lord Jesus Christ and then uh, I'll go through the rest of the talks and I'll ask for your guys's commentary on them uh, the second talk of that first day will be the end of all things um, you know it sounds like this is another uh, revel revelations talk, but what really it is is the end is coming soon for all of us, whether it's the second coming of our Lord or whether it's the end of our lives. And uh, through that meaning and purpose we derive from our faith, we need to, to put all things in our faith, uh, all things in our life need to be informed by our faith, uh, giving glory to God, um, sharing the good news, and directed towards our heavenly home. Uh, the third talk is A Man of All Seasons by Chris Stefanik. Um, and Chris is going to kind of start to address that gender confusion issue that comes in with the person, but he's going to do it specifically to the men in the audience. Um, using our Lord and St. Joseph as an example, uh, he's going to show what true virtuous living means for men, um, kind of returning to strong, virtuous men. And then we'll follow that talk up with a, a young speaker who's new to Napa um, in the main conference, but not new to Napa overall. That's Alexandra DeSantis, and she'll be uh, doing the true and mighty handmaid's uh, tale. And she's going to be looking at feminism um, from the point of view of Our Lady as the model. Um, you know, Mary is both humble and docile, but she's also the queen of heaven and, and very powerful and important in our redemption story. So why is it so important um, that women and men keep the roles that are intended to them? Uh, we'll address in talks three and four. And then finally, the fifth talk will be one of our headliners. It'll be uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, uh, You Shall Be My Witness. And in that talk, he'll be addressing why it's so important that faith be the thing that informs all aspects of our lives, politics, profession, family, etc. cetera. Um, and then finally, we'll finish with an evening panel on charity and serving the poor uh, through the works of mercy, which will be done by Cross Catholic Outreach and Archbishop Cordelione. Tim, what sticks out to you here? What do you think, uh, what do you think about the first day's topics? Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, John and uh, Father uh, Spitzer here, and also Fran Meyer. Uh, Fran, is, uh, this conference is like no other. A lot of times you go to these Catholic conferences, and it's more about somebody selling their book or selling you know, a particular theme, but there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to the entire conference other than you know, they're speaking about great things about the church. And with Napa, through these, this fine speaker committee, we have a, a message, a theme. You know what we need now, but then broken down even further in the first day of, of the person. And this is uh, incredible. Um, uh, when you hear people trying to manufacture people uh, through transgenderism and uh, changing the person of, a, of a, a man or a woman or changing the meaning of what a man or a woman is, it starts getting cloudy. And uh, this is truly uh, from, uh, you know, I think really from the evil one. Uh, he's got us inspired to, to do s some crazy stuff. But this the lineup of speakers, you can't uh, go wrong. All right? We're very pleased. Uh, Curtis Martin is, runs the largest lay apostolate in America, uh, 25 years old, focus, uh, and he's just affected thousands and thousands of people. And you can't go wrong by kicking him off uh, as the original speaker. And so I'll go with him, John. I think he's going to be our uh, excitement right in the first day. Well, I, I think you got you got Curtis Martin, Tim Gray, and Chris Stefanik leading talks <laughs> one, two, and three. So um, yeah, a lot of energy, a lot of wisdom, um, you know, in those three men. So 
<laughs> Father, what about you? What, uh, what sticks out to you in day one? Well, you know, I, as I, I'm fond of saying it's not just gender dysphoria that's happening in the culture. It's person dysphoria yeah. that's happening in the culture. We don't know who we are. We have no pillars to anchor ourselves with. We're trying, you know, furtively to, to go from one thing to another thing to the latest thing. Uh, and all of these things are superficial. All of them are in the whole eternal meaning of things are pretty much meaningless. They're transitory and of course they're flash in the pan. We put our stock and trade in them and of course they disappoint. Our hearts are restless until they rest in the one thing that will make us peaceful and that is God, that's Jesus Christ. And so I think um, uh, what all of these speakers can do, I mean, and you've got a lineup here. I mean, <laughs> Mike Pence is not a bad person to sort of end up on. I mean, this is a great lineup and is pointing to one major thing. Uh, Jesus Christ is the ground of our personhood and the way that the Lord has lined um, you know, personhood up in, in the Bible and especially through the teaching of Jesus, that's going to be um, you know, our guide. We can't do better than that. We think that our modern culture will present us with something new, but Jesus Christ cr is the co-creator of not only us, but everything in, 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 in all of creation. And he knows very well what's going to lead us. So I just think you've hit the nail on the head. Yeah. I think this is the theme, uh, no question, um, the, what I call the person dysphoria theme. And I think getting right back to Jesus Christ, the only way out. And we just have to be really frank about it that, you know, all these other things have not worked. Can the culture, can we sit back and just go, this has been a categorical failure. Yeah. Let's just go back to something that did work. Looks like Jesus Christ. Looks like our church, church's interpretation of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and you know, in this post Christendom, Christendom world that we talk about, you know, we'll touch this on the third day in culture. This idea of this lack of the Catholic anthropology, this misunderstanding of the human person, mm -hmm. but uh, even more so, um, a little bit. The first day will also be about, you know, making sure that Christ is the center of our lives. You know, we can't give what we don't have. A well developed interior life. You know, that's kind of Curtis's mm -hmm. kickoff. You know, if if Christ isn't the anchor of our life, we can't give that to the culture that so desperately needs it. So. Uh, I think it's a really exciting day. Uh, day two will go from the person into the church. Um, so the first talk of day two will be by Helen Alvarez. Uh, she'll be doing Renewing the Church as Mother and Teacher. Uh, in this talk, she'll be talking about why does the church exist? What is the task? Why do we need her? But also, how do we address all the kind of dissent, uncertainty, and conflict that exists within the church? I know that's a, a big issue for a lot of Catholics. They, they get frustrated that, that the the church has the same issues as the culture, but uh, fallen men are inside the church. The church herself is perfect. So uh, Helen will kick off the day with that. Uh, probably one of the best speakers we had last year, Monsignor James Shea, will be the second talk, uh, the food that gives eternal life. So right now the USCCB has a Eucharistic revival going on um, in which they're trying to really bring the, the belief in the true presence back to, to the culture that, that has lost it. Uh, I think it's something like 70% of Catholics don't believe in the true presence. Um, so they're gonna, he's going to kind of address why belief in the true presence is so important and why the sacrament, why the, the Eucharist is so important for us to live that Christian life to renew the church. Um, then maybe the best speaker of the day, uh, faith science and the challenge of science. <laughs> uh, Father Robert Spitzer. So I'm sure that'll be among your favorite topics to talk about. But one of the quotes that Fran wrote here when we were putting this together that I love is, scientism is not science, it's an ideology and a disguised Gnostic form of religion now common throughout leadership classes, a lie and a form of ideology. So we'll talk about that, you know, how faith and science work together, but also why scientism, um, what first off, what scientism is and why it's so bad. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we're gonna have Dan Salucci join us from the Catholic Leadership Institute. If you don't know the Catholic Leadership Institute, they do tremendous work within the church looking at these issues of why there is so m many issues within the walls. Um, so Dan is gonna say, um, where we are now, he's going to look at some of the stuff that Catholic Leadership Institute has been doing um, to kind of look at the church and their issues and what some of the solutions moving forward, um, how we find some hope in that. And then the final talk of that day um, is about finding true happiness, bringing back that joy in our lives. And that'll be uh, uh, Professor Arthur Brooks from uh, Harvard. He's 
uh, actually doing a program before the conference as well on happiness, a uh, 10-part series that you watch before the conference and then leading up to the conference, a multiple day, um, I think it's a two-day uh, session with him talking about um, happiness and how to find happiness in our lives. Uh, that you can get more information on our website for. Um, there's a little bit of a fee to that, but it's an extra add-on. Um, but either way, everyone will get a chance to hear Arthur in the, the talk here uh, to close out the second day. And then the evening panel that night is on Christian unity. Um, so we're going to have uh, Bishop Mansour, who's a uh, Eastern Catholic bishop, David Bonson, who's a contributor to our, our business conference usually, but also a, uh, a Protestant himself. Um, and then Carl Truman, who you've seen speak for us several times, um, a Presbyterian who probably um, is is more aligned than, than most on, yeah. on issues that we talk about. So right. he talks quite a bit, and actually he'll be talking on the third day. So, um, Father, what about day two do you like, um, these, well, uh, in addition to scientism? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. I'll, I'll lay off my uh, topic for a moment. But I just would say that the church is not experiencing a dysphoria, but there is um, a definite disunity, um, um, a lot of uh, opinions in, in the church, but um, we're still held together uh, by that common bond <clears throat> that has been present from its very inception, and that is through um, the Holy Father and through our bishops in union with the Holy Father, we can see that the church always has a fundamental ground in unity that is grounded in Jesus' promise, right, that the gates of the nether world will never prevail against it. And um, I think Jesus set up the church precisely to maintain this unity, even amidst, right, there have been far worse times in the church than now, where, you know, you had uh, basically Arians trying to you know, wipe out non-Arians and so forth and so on. We had people in church councils that were almost coming to fisticuffs, you know, yeah. et cetera. And, and today it's, it's out there. There's real discord. There's no doubt about it. But there's also the promise of Jesus. There's also the Holy Spirit. There's also our good uh, magisterium, and, um, and it holds together. But amidst all of that, we can definitely try to be brokers of uh, some peace out there to have uh, outreach um, to other uh, people who may uh, disagree with us. But more than that, I think we do have to maintain um, our belief um, in uh, the truth of Jesus Christ. And I, I, if we lose that as the center, and I think every one of these speakers is oriented on maintaining the, the moral teaching, the ecclesial teaching of Jesus Christ that's very clear in the scriptures of holding on to that and uh, trying to remain faithful to it, that's going to be our way out of discourse. We're never going to get out of discourse, uh, out of a discord, if we compromise the truth. We can't base it on a lie. Uh, we have to base it ultimately at the end of the day. We have to base it on the truth, but a truth that is given over peacefully, a truth that is genuinely offered in a, in a way to, to talk people through. But we have to be firm to that truth, otherwise there will just be more discord. Yeah, I think... Um I think to your point, it kind of all starts with us. You know, at Napa, we like to uh, to do things in threes because we're Catholic. We have the three pillars. We have the three attributes of our formation. Uh, the three attributes of our formation are that they're done with the spirit of charity first. Uh, this mm -hmm. this idea of civility, um, that they're they're faithful to the magisterium of the church, and that they're intellectually rigorous. So all of these issues we're looking at from mm -hmm. those three things. But that that idea of of charity and truth. Um, being so paramount and, and same with the idea of the person that it, it all starts with us We need to be well formed. Jesus needs to be the center of us so that we can then renew the other um, So I think that uh, I think that this is a, a great kind of fit day one to day two um, Tim, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, Napa Institute is a lay apostolate, but I always say we're we're tethered to the church We have an ecclesiastical advisor Archbishop Paul Coakley from Oklahoma City uh, who is well respected and um, I think it's important that we talk about the church, that uh, you don't, we don't let others try to frame us as people and the Knapp Institute as an organization as somehow anti-church. That's the opposite. We're, we're totally in favor of the church. And the discussion on this day will be very informative, not only to our lay uh, friends, but also to our priest and our bishops who attend. Uh, we'll have probably 75 ordained priests and bishops uh, present along with many nuns. So it's very refreshing to them to hear the importance of this. 
I asked for this panel, uh, which um, if you're a first time attendee, uh, you're going to wonder why are we having an event at 9 o'clock at night? Well, it, it turns out that this is going to be an av amazingly attended uh, event. And uh, I think we have a time now where Protestantism, which has just been you know, fracturing like an amoeba for the last uh, 500 years, uh, not only here in the United States, but throughout the, uh, the world, and in many cases, they've left the uh, sound Judeo-Christian principles to buy into uh, the times of the, of the culture. And there are many faithful friends that uh, are still committed to the Judeo-Christian principles, as a, is the Catholic Church. And I think it's time for dialogue, time for dialogue among the Orthodox, uh, those who are not part of the Catholic Orthodox group, but uh, especially as we see the Ukrainian war and the Russian Orthodox Church uh, battle. This is a time of crisis for the Orthodox Church, uh, but it's also a time of crisis for the Protestant Church as well because they're fracturing and dividing themselves. Uh, the institutional Protestant uh, churches are dividing in two. You know, those who believe in same-sex marriage, those who don't. Those who believe in abortion, those who don't. And in, in the, the, the progressive and, and the conservative. So it's a... Um, uh, there can only be one church, and uh, this is where the Catholic Church is so blessed uh, to have an institution that's the longest lasting institution in the history of the world um, there to carry the tenets of truth of Judeo Christianity and to share them with our, our Protestant friends. So, this is going to be a great panel. Uh, my mother was a Protestant, my wife was a Protestant, both converted to Catholicism. And uh, we have a, a great opportunity here to bring truth. Uh, and Carl Truman, who's an excellent uh, yeah. Protestant speaker, uh, you know, is more aligned to us than most Protestants are. Uh, so we're really happy to have him. This is his third uh, appearance at, uh, as a plenary session speaker. Uh, and he's a member of the Ethics and Public Policy Center in Washington, D.C., which the Knapp Institute uh, supports as well, led by our good friend Ryan Anderson. Yeah, I think it's very important that we uh, kind of find the commonalities where we can work together. Uh, I'm a convert myself, as you, many of you know, and um, kind of seeing that, that need to find areas of alignment and work together, but then also to sow back that, uh, that uh, unity in the church. Um, again, I got shared this morning an article I missed earlier in the week from our local paper here in L.A. that was, again, attacking you and Napa Institute unfairly, uncharitably. And, um, you know, it reminds me of last year when we had the protests during Bill Barr and we had to temporarily stop the talk at night um, to clear the protests. And, you know, I think from stage, my, my comment, which I, I still feel very strongly about is, you know, we had protesters there on the right that thought we weren't far enough right. And we had protesters on the left that thought we weren't far enough left in the church. And, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is not whether you please the right or please the left, but whether you please Jesus Christ, our Lord. I mean, and, and that's where we need to return to. We need to be unapologetically Catholic. Um, we're not right. We're not left. We're not on an agenda. What we are, we're Catholic, and we're pursuing that strongly. And when our Protestant friends, especially Carl Truman being a great example, have things to contribute to what we're talking about, then let's work together. And, and maybe in the process, we'll take a few of them home with us. We'll see. Um, but the... Uh, that brings me right to the, the third day, uh, the culture, and uh, not set up at all by you guys, but I really appreciate it. The first talk of the day is by Carl Truman. Um, <laughs> Carl has spoken for us three times, as Tim mentioned. If, if you're not familiar with Carl, he is a Presbyterian, um, but he is one of the best commentators on culture today. Uh, he wrote a book called The Rise and Triumphs of the Modern Self, which kind of catapulted him onto the map um, as one of those best thinkers, and he's going to be talking about crossing the threshold of hope. Um, We've talked a lot on the panel about how we live in this kind of hopeless, anxious, angry culture. And Carl is going to talk about how Christianity authentically lived is the paramount religion of hope. So how do we restore that hope and how do we preach that hope today? Uh, I think Carl will be the perfect uh, person to lead that day off on the culture. Um, then getting back to this topic of uh, gender confusion that we talked about earlier, we have a panel on the second talk that day, Toward a New Feminism, Healing the Sex Wars, and that's Erica Bacchiocchi. Abigail Flavel and Leah Labresco, um, and they're going to be talking about that Christian anthropology issue that we talked about, how uh, modern secular feminism has created a divide and how we can heal it by returning to our roots. Uh, it's, it's important to note uh, with our recent discussion that all three of these uh, ladies are either converts or reverts to the Catholic faith, so um, kind of returning to the Christian vision of the human person and why it's so important to them. Then we'll go on to Dana Joya, who's joined us in the past, but it's been um, 
last year as a breakout speaker, but a number of years ago as a, a main stage. Uh, Dana is the poet laureate of the state of California here, a wonderful man, and he's going to be talking about recovering the power of beauty. Um, really talking about why is beauty so important. You know, we talk about the truth, the good, and the beautiful. Um, what is beauty's role here in not just evangelizing within the church, but also uh, transforming the culture? Um, and then finally, closing that day's main sessions will be the idea of a Christian society, which will be Ryan Anderson. And this is a little bit of a, um, a, a talk that's going to embrace everything that we've talked about up to that point. Um, you know, we're in this post-Christian world. Many are going to say, is it even possible? Um, uh, and where would we even start to have a Christian society again? And um, we're going to have him come in and talk to us uh, about that very issue. And then finally, we have a talk again, kind of going back to the science talk. Um, Stephen Barr, who is the brother of last year's keynote, Bill Barr. Um, and Stephen is going to be talking about the good news about faith and science healing the rift. So uh, I think when Bill was at the conference last year, he said, my brother is far smarter than me. He's the <laughs> astrophysicist. So um, his, Bill Barr's brother, the astrophysicist, will talk to us about the importance of faith and science working together. And then to close the dinner, um, Jonathan Reyes from the Knights of Columbus is going to come in and kind of take the entire weekend and summarize it for us in, in a closing talk there on Saturday night. So, um, gentlemen, thoughts on this? Tim? Well, another, another great day. Uh, um, we already talked about Carl Truman, uh, but um, culture is so important. You know, we, uh, the trouble with our Catholics uh, is that we follow the culture. We want to get along with everybody. And uh, if they're believing in a certain particular uh, teaching or ideology, we go pretty much with the culture. So I think it's important to address that and to get back to the church, who is really our culture. And I think what Knapp Institute's all about, I call it a Catholic lifestyle organization. What I mean by that is uh, there was a book, book written by Rod Dreyer about Benedict Option. It's sort of an impractical approach for most of us because we're in the world. Uh, we're not of the world, and what Napa is trying to do is to keep you from flowing uh, away from uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ to the teachings of the ideology of the culture. And uh, people say, well, you know, you have all of the people that are Catholics that are going to church, and that's who really attends Napa Institute. And I say, yeah, we're preaching to the choir because we don't want to lose the choir. Yeah. You know, the choir is in the culture as well. And uh, it's important to keep them on task because they're the leaders in our, our culture, in our Catholic culture. And so this is what this day is all about. Yeah, I think uh, to your point there, Tim, um, preaching to the choir, it, it's very important that we all have these opportunities for renewal. In fact, one of the biggest compliments I get on the conference is it's an opportunity for us to kind of have that mini Benedict option. We come back together. Uh, we find renewal. We find connections. We work together. And we have that, that, that energy then to go out and do the good work that God wants us to do. But you also mentioned the importance of culture, and I think the church has always driven culture. And I think that's one of the, the beauties of Dana Joya's talk here on beauty, um, is that uh, we're going to look again on, on why it's so important that the church return to that role. Um, we need to be the ones that are the artists, the musicians. We need to be driving the cultural decisions. And then even the cultural lies. Uh, the, the feminism panel, I think, is one of our best panels yeah. this year, um, you know, kind of returning to that, that Catholic understanding of things, especially the human person. Father, what are your thoughts? Well, I think all of the speakers, again, are very uniquely uh, prepared to, to talk about culture, and all of them, more importantly, put their uh, reputations, their academic reputations, on the line. And, I mean, uh, you know, for Dana Goya to be coming out and and saying, you know, gee, I'm a poet laureate and from USC and I'm here at the Napa Institute. He's putting himself on the line, um, you know, vis-a-vis -vis his uh, academic reputation because I think um, in a way, uh, all of them, you know, not just Dana, but uh, all of the, uh, the, the people who are there are pretty much making a statement that the culture itself in its current trajectory is self-destructive. It's like Tolkien's, you know, big spider that is just yet so hungry all it can do is to feast on itself until it eats itself away but the point of course is is that's what's happening and i think what um we can provide is not only help for the uh, um the choir i think uh, the choir can help the culture by at least bringing some insights um about what's going on in the culture out uh into full the full light of day because I think what's happening right now is a lot of these dark myths 
and they are myths. They're myths about morality and myths about happiness and myths about um, uh, success and myths about quality of life and myths about suffering and, and so forth. All these myths uh, uh, basically um, are forming a, a kind of a new mythology and um, it is just, uh, as I said at the opening uh, uh, of, the, of the interview here, uh, it's killing our culture. It's We're the highest rate of depression ever, highest rate of anxiety ever among young people, highest rate of homicides, highest rate of suicides ever, ever by far. And it's just not blamable on COVID. It is the culture. And so I think what these um, individuals can do is first of all, expose the lie, which I think is very, very important that somehow we can put our faith in something other than truth itself, beauty itself, goodness itself, and, and, and love itself, namely Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then secondly, that uh, we don't have to follow a moral teaching. We can be the masters of our own morality. Yeah, I mean, um, that means that if we start off blind, we'll wind up blind, and we will wind up in the end result uh, through our blindness, uh, falling into the hole that Jesus talks about. Um, and so uh, I think we have to expose the lie. I think that's what um, these speak. Uh, Carl Truman is just uniquely capable of doing that. And uh, um, you can see with um, Ryan Anderson, I mean, every talk he gives, he exposes yeah. at least two or three new uh, lies that are just poignantly destructive. And then finally uh, getting, you know, to the, uh, yeah. um, to the end, you know, Jonathan Reyes, he's not only a good summarizer, Jonathan gets the culture, and so I think we're going to have fantastic uh, group to really t have takeaway insights that we can give to our younger people, to our colleagues in our business situations, to our colleagues in leadership positions uh, within our local cultures. These are the things eventually from the grassroots, right, working up, uh, it's really important uh, not to save the saved, but to give the saved tools where they can actually make a huge difference to getting off the self-destructive, almost culturally suicidal trajectory. Yeah, yeah, no, I think all of these uh, speakers have great resources. Um, Ryan Anderson spoke for the first time for mm -hmm. Napa about six years ago. He's been back almost every year because mm -hmm. it was kind of a coming out party for him. Everyone <laughs> said, hey, this is a young man that's really smart. Yeah. Uh, and then same thing with Carl Truman. You know, Carl was a theologian who set out to write a book um, because he thought it was so absurd that I'm a man trapped in a, a woman's body was was okay and what his grandfather would think of that. So he wanted to figure out where that came from. So that's where he wrote The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self and it turned into a smash hit that no one expected it to be. Um, you know, not just among Catholics, among everybody. Um, so it, it really a lot of wisdom in these days. I think that, you know, when, when Tim and Father and Archbishop Shafi set out to form the original mission of the Nap Institute, I think what we're doing is really hitting it home right now, um, and that is to equip Catholic leaders to respond to these cultural issues. And I think that this conference has really kind of answered that mm -hmm. call. Um, and that's an important thing to remember is that, you know, we're, we're many parts of one body and, you know, there are, there are organizations that are supposed to go out there and get the unchurched. That's not us. We're, we're the ones who are providing the resources necessary for those who are already in the church to do what they need to do more. And in, in, in particular with us for church leaders um, to kind of understand a, a hostile culture so that they can then advance the faith within that culture. So um, really proud of what's happening this year at the conference. Um, again, as Tim said, Fran and the rest of the speaker committee, uh, Phil Munoz and and uh, yourself, Father, I think we've done uh, a great job this year, and I really look forward to, to having everyone out to, to be with us for those three pillars, um, one of which is formation, which we talked about today, but also that spiritual renewal, the 100-plus masses and spiritual direction and confession, but also um, beyond the spiritual renewal, um, that community that's so important that we build community among Catholic leaders. Any closing thoughts, Tim, that you want to add? No, you just touched on it at the end there. Um, this isn't just about sitting through plenary sessions and breakouts, and there's, there's a hundred of all that. Um, this is really a, about uh, an opportunity to meet new friends, uh, renew friendships with uh, old friends that you haven't seen in a while, maybe since the prior year. And uh, we've got confessions going on all the time, adoration going on. We have a dedicated adoration chapel. We have three prelate plenary masses in the estate cave each day. A Eucharistic procession, which we started back in 2011, and it's accompanying the uh, Eucharistic renewal that we are seeing today. 
And finally, the masses that uh, are in the permanent chapel, it's located at the Meritage. It'll be newly renovated, so it's going to be exciting to see that. Uh, but um, there's masses going on there every half hour during uh, the uh, conference. So a lot of grace. Uh, um, grace through the sacraments is our weapon. That's our nuclear option. Uh, we can uh, fight these in the streets. We can have intellectual conversations about these uh, issues. But at the end of the day, we have to have grace to win this. It's a spiritual warfare of good against evil, and we have to continue to charitably uh, uh, espouse the truth, but we have to continue to be loyal to our sacraments, to our daily mass, our rosary. These are our real weapons. Yeah, yeah, you know, I can do all things through Christ, not I can do all things, and sometimes I call on Christ. So it's like, <laughs> you know, we talk about, I feel like a broken record, but the, if we don't have a prayer life and a well-developed interior life, then how can we give what we're asking to give here, which is which is that relationship with Christ, um, making him the anchor of our lives. So, Father, what about you? Closing thoughts? Well, I think um, through all the activities that Tim was just mentioning, I think we hit all three kinds of conversion. Um, we hit intellectual conversion very deeply, spiritual conversion very, very deeply, and moral conversion as well. All the talks are coming together, but all the activities like the retreats, the various liturgies, the Eucharistic processions, all the things that Tim was mentioning, that's coming together. But then there's that, what I call the X factor, our camaraderie. Um, there is nothing like the Napa Institute to not only make new friends, but to build that real spirit, that sense that there is a countercultural ethos out there around really smart leaders in the Catholic Church that can make a difference in the world and we are a force to be contended with. So, I mean, last year when the, when the, you know, the conference was interrupted by the protesters, I thought, I hope we have some protesters next year because it, by the time we finish singing that hymn uh, to Mary, the, the protest was over. Yeah. I mean, the, the noise was gone. And Bill Barr uh, looks up uh, and, he, and he says, uh, wow. You know, I never thought that the Salve Regina worked so well. Yeah. And, of course, off we went. But, I mean, it was that moment where in the grace, in the prayer, um, and the, uh, the, you know, the, the sense of our own ability to make a transformative contribution um, from our Catholic faith to the culture and the cultural change through our leadership positions, that there is much more energy, creativity, and manifest grace through our collective efforts and through our, you know, gathering together, our unity with one another in camaraderie. You know, it's the spirit of leadership, the synergy that makes one plus one equal five. That's the X factor in our Napa Institute. And you come out not only meeting new friends, you just come out feeling like, hey, there is a counterculture out here. It is a strong cult counterculture. We're not just second-rate old shoes, you know, that, that uh, you know, can just be thrown at, uh, you know, at the f foot of the door. We are somebody, we are a collective group of people through our various leadership positions in unity with one another that can really, really make a difference to the transformation of the culture and to our local churches as well. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I thought for sure, to your point, I thought the protesters added much more than they took away. Oh, yeah. You know, kind of the, yeah. the evil untruths that they were trying to spread. And then, you know, understanding that this is a spiritual battle. And the, the <laughs> prayer of the St. Michael prayer and the Salva Regina, and boom, they were gone. And I did, the Bill Barr did comment on that. He's like, I wish I had these uh, in other portions of my career. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that kind of idea that we're on this together mm -hmm. is, is so important. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate the time today, and I look forward to seeing everyone at the, at the conference. Father, would you like to give us a closing blessing? Yes. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And may the Lord, who is filled with unity, love, goodness, beauty, truth, and consolation, send his spirit down into your hearts. And as we prepare and then attend these meetings at the Napa Conference, may we be together uplifted by it so that we might better be able to serve our church, to serve personhood within our culture, and to serve the culture itself. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. And uh, again, we look forward to seeing you all at the conference in this July.